All right, we're back and better than ever. Welcome to Montrose Vibes, your home for the latest and greatest entertainment happenings in and around Montrose. Uh, with me is my co-host, Monica, and I'm Matt. Hey, Montrose. Uh, and today we have a very special guest, a successful local musician and businessman, owner and man behind a very hot music venue uh, on Montrose's Main Street, Intrinsic. Uh, welcome, Josh Fabian. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're... We're very fortunate to have you here and appreciate you making time. Uh, so in a nutshell, Josh, you had, still have a very successful business in dynamic integrations? Yep, yep, we're busy with that one as well. And that's a full-service electrical contractor, essentially? Yep, we, we do electrical contracting and solar contracting. Uh, then last year, uh, you decided to repurpose what at one time was a, a bar in a spot on Main Street and turned it into a music venue, uh, Intrinsic. So can you talk about that process and why you wanted to do it? You know, I've been looking and wanting to do a music venue in Montrose since I moved here um, 18 years ago. And, you know, we looked at different spots over the years and watched other kind of, uh, you know, venues come in and out and whatnot and just kind of kept keeping an eye on the scene. And, and it just seemed like the time was right to make it happen. And that spot came open and available and we just made a move on it and it was quite the process to get it put together especially in the time frame we did it um, there were some late nights I was working in there till three four in the morning pretty regularly there the last month or so to, uh, to get it done in essentially two months and um, so we could get open and get hit the ground running and what sparked your love for music how old were you you know, I came to music later in life as far as a musician. I always loved music. I wanted to play music when I was younger. Um, just didn't really have the opportunity to play music. And when I was in my early 20s, 21, 22, um, we were all kind of hanging around our hometown there in Ohio and we put a band together and I was the de facto bass player and just actually really sparked a love for bass for me. So that's where that all started. Um, yeah, and it's just been downhill, uphill since then. Yeah, <laughs> up, uphill, not downhill. <laughs> um, so who were some of the bands or artists you grew up listening to, and what did you love about them? Uh, a lot of the bands that I listened to when I was growing up was um, music that my dad was turning me on to. Um, early Ario Speedwagon, Led Zeppelin, The Who, um, that whole, you know, early round of classic rock is what I really got into. What, what about that genre or those artists did you just love? That, I mean, you said your dad loved those artists, but what made you enjoy them and get into them like you did? Uh, just the full-on rock, you know, I just, I, I love jazz, I love funk, I love folk and, and bluegrass and country, I, I love it all, but I, you know, I, in my heart, I, I love rock and roll. That's that's what I'm all about. Are there any particular artists you're listening to now? Oh, geez. <laughs> you guys always have these great uh, questions that put you on the spot for what you're listening to. I listen to... I'm constantly looking for new stuff to listen to. I'm very fortunate that I get to listen to all of this music that is presented to me that, um, you know, people that want to come in and play at Intrinsic. So I get turned on to just so much music and it's, it's unbelievable how much good music there is at this, you know, I don't want to say lower level, but more like entry level of just starting to get out there and tour level. Um, I mean, these bands are amazing these days. Um, let's see, who do I listen to often these days? Um, I always listen to Modesky Martin Wood. That's a more of a jazz funk band. Um, they've been around for 25 years now, 30 years. But um, Fish, I listen to a lot of Fish. Everybody kind of knows me as the jam bandy guy. But I love that stuff too. Um, Wolfpack, that is a band that's kind of come into popularity here quite a bit in the last few years, and they're they're just out there killing it in the the groovy scene. You know, it's more of a groove based. It's got a little bit of a Steely Dan vibe. Steely Dan, I still listen to a lot of Steely Dan. So my listening is kind of all over the place. I listen to a fair amount of bluegrass, and um, especially like I said with the bands that are coming in, I. 
I, I'll hear a new band and it's like that's all I'll listen to for the next month. One Direction, in sync. All those yeah, guys. you know, I, I I don't know that I ever really got into <laughs> those guys. Um, you know, I remember last summer we were to- you were giving me a tour of Intrinsic. Uh, during the construction, actually, I don't even think the stage the stage might have just been built at right. that point. Uh, but you were talking about you had a good ear for music, but that intrinsic wasn't going to be just about what you exclusively love. That you were going to bring in artists and genres that weren't necessarily your cup of tea, but that people would enjoy. Uh, so, can you talk about why you wanted to do that and how that process has been going? Well, yeah, I mean, y- you kind of get into opening a venue because you have a passion for your kind of music and what you want to see but at the same time if you don't go into it with uh, with the mindset that you're, you're kind of trying to build something for the community you know I don't know that you're going to have staying power so um, my whole deal was I wanted to have a spot for the community to go out and be able to enjoy music that they may like that I may not necessarily you know like at that time or you know I may grow to like it what whatever the case may be you know so I wanted to have something there for all of us to have an outlet a musical outlet because I think that's pretty it's instrumental you know in our lives not not to make a stupid pun but you know it is a it's a key to happiness and what I see in this life is is getting filled up with you know good music and I might not find, you might not find the same music that I enjoy, you, vice versa, you know, the whole circle mm-hmm. there. So I wanted everyone to have that outlet. It also seems like you're there for practically every show that you put on. Maybe not all of them, but pretty close. I don't know other than a death in the family early in the, our infancy of being opened, have I not been there for a show. <laughs> what do you love about live music? Oh, it's just I don't know. There's a there's an energy that comes along with live music, um, and it and it goes all the way from the smallest of venues and smallest of shows all the way up to the biggest. And I might argue that some of the smaller, more up and coming bands might have more of that energy and that vibe that I am always chasing than even some of the bigger shows because that's where I really hooked on to music was going in my early 20s going to these college towns and going to see these up-and-coming bands that we were getting into at that time in the you know mid to late 90s and there was just this hunger in the bands and there's this energy and there was this elect- honestly an electricity in the room every time and I still see that with these up-and-coming bands and it's pretty exciting to see a band that is out there giving it their all sleeping on people's floors eating peanut butter and jelly pretty much every meal and just out there loving it when they get on stage none of that matters they're just there they're in the moment and it's it's pretty amazing actually (laughs) what was uh the first concert you ever attended whether that was with your parents or just yeah just that first show (laughs) the first concert that i ever went to was drumwell uh zz top at our county fair so you know most bands have that cyclical thing where they're on top and then they're you know playing county fairs well that was at the point zz top was in their county fair days but now they're back on top they're an amazing band they always have been but at that point in the mid 90s early 90s even um yeah they were in county fairs and I think I saw them for ten dollars or something, or it might even been a free show. Pretty good show. It was an amazing show. One of the loudest shows I've ever seen. But <laughs> <laughs> intrinsic seems to be bringing national artists to town. How do you go about finding talent, and what have you, what have been some of your favorite shows so far? Oh, geez. Um, as far as finding talent, once you start booking a few shows all of those booking agencies that exist on the planet find you so i don't do a lot of searching out bands um we mostly get approached by booking agencies that have a an amazing roster and they'll have all the way from those entry level touring bands all the way up to you know bands that have been out there doing it for many years and have a really good following built up so as far as us 
going out and approaching bands, we don't do that a whole lot. We are so lucky, and it kind of goes to what I was telling you the other day, Matt, about, um, you know, we, we were starting to get this reputation with the bands, especially, that, hey, this is a place we need to play. Um, there's a rabid music fan base in Montrose, you know. These people come out, and they love to see music, so they're very appreciative of the music, and that translates to a really positive experience for the bands. So that's basically how we're, you know, getting some of these bands in there. But as far as favorites, I don't even know if I can say that. I, I mean, I can nail down one or two, but Hitteroso was one that just blew me away when they came in. They were kind of more of a jazz fusion band. Um, the Moves Collective from San Diego. Um, the Battlefield, you guys were at the Battlefield show. That was a really great show, just a very, you know, kind of an Americana, mellow vibe show. It was really good. Um, cycles, I love Cycles. Those guys have been in a couple times now. Yeah, geez, to nail one down as a favorite, I don't think I could do. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Intrinsic, Intrinsic also has a, ban a bar, I'm sorry. Um, what else can people come to enjoy? Uh, you know, we have, well, we no, there might be one other place in town um, that has kombucha on tap. We have kombucha on tap. Um, we try to offer, you know, a good selection of non-alcoholic options with the kombucha. And then we also have all natural, you know, organic sodas. We're not doing, um, we're not doing the corporate scene on the soda scene. Um, so that's one thing. As far as food, we are actively looking into doing some some food options. You know, we really want to get into that market. Not we don't want to necessarily become a full on restaurant. And I'd have never been to a music venue in my life that actually has food at it. But you know, we have a lot of requests for food and just late night kind of snacky munchy things. So we're gonna we're we're definitely moving into that arena as well. Um, now, I know Intrinsic, you had said, was going to really focus on bringing like national artists to town, uh, but you've also had some nice benefit shows at the venue uh, with some local artists. Um, so I'm just curious what your thoughts are on like the evolution of the Montrose music scene and kind of where do you think it stands right now? You know, I, I've never been opposed to doing uh, local bands. I actually am very much a proponent of doing local bands. Um, mm -hmm. The local bands are the the heart and soul of your local music scene that's for sure mm -hmm. and you know I play in or have played in many of them over the years so uh, definitely a believer in that aspect and we have several of them coming up in the next month or so mm -hmm. but as far as the uh, evolution of the music scene it's been amazing to watch it go over the last couple of years because I've been here for 18 years now and you know there was great bands when I got here and some of those bands have gone away some of them are still there um, but it's always kind of an ebb and flow in that aspect but it's 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 amazing the kind of musicians we have in Montrose and you know I think that's kind of a Colorado trait period but boy to we host the open jam once a month on the first Tuesday and the music that gets produced at the Open Jam is as good of, as any show that we have, you know, any time. It's just we have that caliber of musicians around here. And we love doing the, uh, the benefit shows. We love working with nonprofits. I mean, I was doing the same kind of concepts with dynamic integration. We would, uh, and we still do, um, you know, try to work with nonprofits. And that's just something that's really important to me. And and my wife and our, and our whole organization that we want to, you know, we want to get back to the community that gives to us. Now, you mentioned uh, your days of being in a band. You, you still have the band. You guys get together. Oh, yeah. No, we've we Trip to Cal has played. Uh, we've played Intrinsic a couple times, opening some shows and doing some benefits and whatnot. So I, I know you, at least if I remember right, you said that you wouldn't necessarily want to get back into, like, a full band schedule for forming regularly. I think is what I remember. But oh, I don't know. That. I think you could always rope me into doing that. <laughs> I was going to say, because you, you guys have a following. Every time you guys perform, there's a, a massive following. So I'm just curious if you'd entertain that type of uh, schedule again. Oh, yeah, I would definitely. 
I, you know, I might say that just to save face in certain situations. <laughs> <laughs> I could always be talked into getting back out on the road and playing music. <laughs> so what's been some feedback you've gotten on the venue? You know, I have gotten nothing but positive feedback on the on Intrinsic. It's it's really cool to see people come in and, you know, just thank me for bringing something like this to town. And that's that's awesome. You know, people are they're recognizing that, you know, the town has needed something like this for a little while. And, um, you know, we try to really create a, a safe and inviting atmosphere for folks, um, which well, I've been complimented on that as well. You know, we have we always have a couple security guys on, especially for bigger shows. You know, we don't we want ladies to feel safe. We want guys to feel safe. We like to have kids in for shows because we we want kids to be, you know, exposed to good music and you know and we ask that most parents you know exercise good judgment on when it's time for the kids the kiddos to go home but you know we don't want to push them away from being at shows because like i said music is just it's a huge part of everyone's life if you allow it to be what has been the most surprising or what's something you've learned in the first it's not been a full year yet but in the first several months of having the venue open it's a lot of work (laughs) i mean i i didn't fool myself to think that it wasn't going to be a lot of work but um you know it's just the details everything's always in the details so uh and i'm very detail oriented there were a lot of details that i wasn't fully aware of that now i've become aware of that i want to make even better than they are now you know i want to sharpen everything up I'm constantly that's i'm always striving for whatever it is i'm doing to be better and that's for sure it seems like you're able to put together a ton of shows and other various events what's on the schedule for april april is a pretty big month we've got a big week coming up for the first week of april um well, of course, this weekend, tonight, actually, we've got DJ Scotty with his doing his 90s and beyond set. Um, folks really seem to like that. So that's tonight. And then tomorrow, The Grass is Dead. They're a great band. And then Saturday, local metal band Rift is going to be in there playing. They don't play a whole lot in the area. So um, it's going to be a pretty big and rocking show for sure. And then... Early next week, Tuesday is our first uh, our first Tuesday open jam, which is like I said, it's just it's amazing to see the band, the 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 folks, the local talent that come out for that. And then we got hit up by a band called Stig, and I believe they are out of Boston, and they're kind of a jazz fusion band, and they're going to be amazing on Wednesday. So that would be one I would definitely recommend. And then we have another ladies' night, Zoloft coming up. Uh, April 6th, Friday, April 6th. Um, everyone in Montrose loves Zoloft. Those guys have been out there just killing it for the last like 10 years. Um, they're hitting their stride touring all over the country now. So really proud of those guys as well. Grand Junction Band. Um, and then Donnie and Mark Puker Spindler are going to be playing on Saturday um, as Brothers Swampy. Um, Kapoori Woods is coming up uh, later in the month. We have Reed Mathis and his Electric Beethoven project, which is going to be, I can't even express how, what a treat it is we're going to have with that show. I mean, it's the only Western Colorado show he's playing. I think they're doing three front range dates beyond that. I mean, this is a band that plays Brooklyn Bowl in, you know, Vegas in New York and uh, I mean, these guys are a serious, serious band. This is going to be probably one of the biggest shows we've had so far. Just as far as immense talent that we're bringing in, we're very fortunate to have this show. So there's just all kinds of stuff coming up. And, you know, May is already booked. June's booked. I'm booking into August and September right now for mm-hmm. shows. So, Well, you said you didn't want me to put you on the spot again, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, we play a little game. We've been doing it, so maybe you've caught on. But uh, you're alone on an island, uh, and you can only listen to three artists uh, for the rest of your life. Who, who are you choosing? Oh, I've, ca- I've caught on. I've caught on. <laughs> I usually I say albums. We're going to switch it to artists. 
Oh, we can just go with artists? Well, if you want to do albums, we can do that. I know down my albums, man. All right, you go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I'm going to go with an early influence with Led Zeppelin, and we'll go with Led Zeppelin 2. That album was just... That's a good one. You know, I got into Led Zeppelin via some other albums, um, actually four, but um, having dove into that whole collection of music, Led Zeppelin 2 is what really resonated with me, especially when I was in middle school or junior high, you know, at the time. So uh, that would be one. Um, Fish, a live one from the you know mid 90s all recorded in the mid 90s there and just that was one of the first albums that got me hooked with fish and then i will also go with Medeski martin and wood that band is chris wood as their bass player is one of my biggest influences as a bass player so i um, always gravitate back to that album those are some nice choices yeah you guys can find intrinsic on facebook I-N-T-R-I-N-Z-I-K. Josh, how else can people reach out to you or learn more about Intrinsic? Uh, the website, intrinsicvenue.com, is a good resource as well. Um, we're really trying to start doing some more advertising as well to let folks know about us. And, yeah, we're in trying to do all the event calendars and everything in the local area. So keep an eye out. Um, well, well, Josh, we, we want to thank you for coming out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to check out Intrinsic in downtown Montrose if you haven't already. And if you have, you probably don't need us to tell you that it's uh, a great place because you're probably in there quite a bit. Uh, it really is a, an awesome venue. Uh, so congrats on all the success. Thanks, and thanks for having me, you guys. Absolutely. Catch you later, Montrose. <laughs>